The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11157 in the name of Roderick Campbell on Scotland's outstanding year of sport. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr Campbell, if you are ready, if you'd like to open the debate, seven minutes please or thereby. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It will not have escaped the attention of anybody in the Chamber that the 18th of September saw a historic vote take place. This vote, the first of its kind that has taken place, had the ability to lay a marker down in history. It was an opportunity to reject a centuries-old system that some believed was outdated and unrepresentative and which saw a very high turnout of approximately 85%. I can see the looks of uh, one opposition member here thinking, what's this about? I speak, of course, of the ballot that took place of the members of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club, based in St Andrews, over whether or not to allow female membership. I'm certain that we all welcome the decision by the RNA to allow female members at last, with some 85% of members in favour. And I personally hope the days of the so-called old boys clubs will soon be nothing more than a distant memory. This was, however, only one quite momentous occasion in Scottish sport this year. Presiding officer, I'm a, presiding officer, I'm aware that I only have seven minutes to speak, and I do not want to fill all of that time reflecting on the glorious sporting achievements of our sportsmen and women in the past 12 months, but I very easily could. I'm certain that everybody speaking in this debate today could devote their time to listing all of the sterling achievements of Scotland's athletes. And still, there would be one dedicated, hard-working, professional athlete missed out or one achievement overlooked. I think we can all agree, however, that all our athletes across all sports deserve our thanks and our praise for their performances in 2014. Even our national football team, who have undergone something of a renaissance under Gordon Strachan. I think we can all agree that 2014 was indeed an outstanding year of Scottish sport. Indeed, it's almost a cliché to say that we are running out of clichés to describe how exciting the two biggest sporting events to occur in Scotland in recent years, the Commonwealth Games and the Ryder Cup, were. The Ryder Cup saw some of the world's most famous golfers descend on Glen Eagles for what was, by all accounts, an exceptionally well-organised and well-run event. There was even a Scottish golfer, Stephen Gallagher, in the European team, who did the country proud over the weekend in helping to contribute to what was recognised as an excellent, an excellent team effort, led by the Irish captain, of course, Paul McKinley. As for the Commonwealth Games, they produced a brand new list of heroes who will adorn posters on bedrooms throughout the country to aspiring children hoping to emulate their achievements. If the photo book of the games that was delivered to, I think, all MSP offices earlier in the week is anything to go by, there are certainly some inspirational images for our young people to look up to. Team Scotland had its most successful games ever, and Scottish sport will hopefully soon reap the rewards. Indeed, some places already are. Areas across Scotland benefited from the Commonwealth Games, perhaps not directly by being able to host an event, but indirectly by receiving funding to help improve sporting facilities in their communities. In North East Fife alone, Cooper's Skate Park will soon be up and running, courtesy of a cash injection from the 2014 Legacy Fund. And several schools and clubs received funding to help improve sporting experiences for children and young people in the area. Indeed, another half a million pounds worth of 2014 legacy funding was recently announced, which I'm sure will be put to excellent use in the communities fortunate enough to receive a share of it. It's my genuine hope that sporting achievements we have witnessed from our athletes can be a positive example to our young people going forward. We could all stand here today and sing the praises of those who have achieved so much this year. They rightfully deserve our praise for their successes and for entertaining us so well. Their dedication to their sport is unquestionable. Their resolve to being the best in their chosen field, undeniable. It's, however, no good to simply admire our current sporting idols. We must look to improve upon the current crop of star athletes, and the only way to do so is to look at grassroots sport. Local sports club, whose members devote their time, money, blood, sweat and tears to providing sporting opportunity for local youngsters, are those who truly deserve our admiration. It is at this level that our sporting stars of tomorrow are born and nurtured. Groups such as Five Floorball Club, who this week helped raise money with the Kakodi Lions Club for Rachel's House Children's Hospice, and who attract over 30 children to their weekly training sessions. Or clubs such as the Howard Fife Rugby Club, in my own constituency, who offer rugby clubs to hundreds of local children every week, and who this year saw two of their alumni run out for the Scottish national team at Murrayfield. 
And for those of us who used to play rugby in the past, we can uh, perhaps just uh, look on enviously at the facilities and opportunities that are now available. Whilst nothing can ever prevent the Scottish climate from taking a turn for the worse, the improved facilities, better pitches and more equipment available to local clubs are all vital components to providing a more enjoyable experience for our young people. Hopefully they can also help to encourage them to carry on with sport as they grow older. It's fair to say, however, I think, they think more can be done to provide even more sporting opportunities for our young people. I want to close, if I may, by considering the work that has already been carried out by the Scottish Government to ensure Scotland's year of outstanding sport in 2014 can hopefully be replicated in future years. I've already spoken about the 2014 legacy funding, which has benefited many clubs and societies in North East Fife, uh, and already uh, benefited from uh, up to now. Cooper, however, in my constituency, will also soon be home to a community sports hub. The Active Schools Network, meanwhile, has also been credited with providing millions of opportunities for young people to be involved in sport, according to the Scottish Government's website. I'm aware that this arrangement is in place with all 32 local authorities until next year, and I look forward to hearing what the future holds for this network. Presiding Officer, 2014 has been an excellent year for sport in Scotland and for Scottish athletes. I look forward to being able to say the same thing for 2015, which of course brings the British Open once again to my constituency, and with it, no doubt, some new sporting heroes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. I now call on Liz Smith to be followed by Kenny McCaskill. Four minutes or thereby, please. Okay, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And uh, may I commend uh, Roderick Campbell for bringing this member's business to the Chamber. In a week which uh, began in Glasgow with the BBC Sports Personality Awards and uh, Prince Harry's very eloquent speech at that event, in which he reminded us all of the power that sport has to change uh, for li lives forever, is very appropriate indeed, I think, to celebrate the role which Scotland has had in 2014, as Roderick Campbell has rightly said, a year like no other. As somebody who has spent 40 years of my life uh, very actively involved playing very different sports, a very considerable wide range of ability, I have to say, from beginner to international in one sport, but also coaching many youngsters from very different backgrounds, I believe sport in Scotland in 2014 has given us a great deal to think about for the years ahead. And these are the themes which uh, are featuring very strongly on the cross-party group uh, on sport, which I co-chair uh, with Alison Johnston. It goes without saying that I think it's a particular pleasure for Mid-Scotland and Fife uh, MSPs uh, to celebrate the hugely successful uh, Ryder Cup at Glen Eagles and Roderick Campbell's right to point to the British Open coming back uh, to Mid-Scotland and Fife next year. Um, but I think we can also forget uh, about curling because not only were there 10 of the 12 uh, GB medalists in this year's Winter Olympics from Scotland, but seven of these uh, curlers live near or in Stirling. Hosting major sporting events or producing uh, elite talent is not just a matter of pride or benefit to our local economies, uh, as record numbers of spectators are testament to, but it reflects something that I think is further ingrained in each one of us uh, and society itself, our love uh, of competition. As I think competitive sport develops a work ethic, it develops and reinforces social bonds, friendships and a sense of community. And I think qualitative measurements do not exactly help uh, when it comes to putting a value on this. But if you look at the faces of the school children who took part in all the associated sporting events this summer, I don't really think you need these because I think sport speaks for itself. For many people, I think it's the spectacle as well as the sport itself. This was clearly evident from the uh, 600,000 visitors to the Commonwealth Games who witnessed elite level competition in world-class settings, including in sports, uh, for which they were previously unacquainted. For me, some of the greatest joys of this summer were witnessing the successes in so-called minority sports like squash and netball uh, and bowls, which attracted huge crowds. And uh, for uh, a very important part of that, I think, was the improvement in broadcasting that accompanied these sports. And the media interest, I think, uh, in some of these areas has greatly increased. I think that's a, a very healthy sign. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I have to say I am appalled when anyone says that competitive sport uh, should be banned. Uh, I can think of nothing that is more contrary to the spirit of young people, to real life, or which does more harm to the self-discipline of young people. And I think Roderick Campbell is right when he says that part of the legacy uh, is something that we must attach great importance to. Competitive sport, in my uh, estimation, must return to all schools and be enshrined in the legacy uh, that we uh, shed for 
uh, years ahead. Something which I think can help that is the growing value that we attach to lots of different sports rather than those which over time have dominated uh, the school timetable. Uh, perhaps football, rugby and hockey and athletics in years past have been these dominating ones, but I think times are changing and I think that's greatly to the benefit of more youngsters participating. Pres Presiding officer, I think schools do hold the key uh, in many of this uh, area, but I think we also have to accept that we need to do more uh, about a cultural change. That's something that Sports Scotland is very strong on just now. It's something that comes up time and time again at the cross-party uh, group on sport. Uh, our previous co-convener co was uh, Margot MacDonald, of course, and that was a, a point that she made very regularly. There has to be a cultural change in how we uh, react to sport. I think that's true uh, for music and languages, but I think it's perhaps more in engaging when it comes to sport uh, for people of all backgrounds and tastes, and I think it can inspire a passion and a creativity and an innovation that perhaps is missing uh, for too many youngsters. So it's for that reason that I warmly welcome the wider coverage of sports, male and female. And again, Roger Campbell is absolutely right uh, to point to the uh, absolutely correct decision that was made by the Royal and Ancient uh, to invite women uh, to be members. So I think there's lots to celebrate. Uh, and in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, I hope the legacy of this phenomenal year is measured not just in quantitative improvements in participation rates and changing people's perception about health, but there is a much better attitude and culture for what is something uh, for which I have a very considerable passion. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call on Kenny McCaskill, after which we we'll move the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I too join in the thanks to Rod Campbell for bringing this debate? Uh, I simply want to echo the points that he himself has made. This has both a national and indeed a local aspect. It also has both a review of the successful year past, but also the opportunity to look forward, I think, to even better times on a national and indeed on a community scale. It has been a great year for sport, not simply in the city of Glasgow, and I think history will probably record that it was transformational for the city of Glasgow, an opportunity to look forward to future successes, not simply to look at historic successes in the past. But equally, as Rod Campbell also mentioned, to other communities, whether Glen Eagles or indeed communities the length and breadth of the country, Scotland is a better place for what was achieved, not simply by those who were doing so on the basis of their paid and salaried commitment, uh, but those who did so on a voluntary basis, uh, whether in helping out in the Commonwealth Games or, as Rod Campbell himself correctly said, who are the unsung heroes who support sport at a grassroots level on a daily basis and have done so when it was not perhaps as favourable times as they are now. I think it's also been transformational in that there's been a recognition that sport is not simply an individual action that you take, that you can join a club or take out a gym membership. There's a clear recognition now at governmental level that we have to do so and encourage participation for the public good. It is not simply individual, even if some sports are individual pursuits, it is the collective good, and that's why I think I simply want to echo the comments made by Rod Campbell. It has been good for the elite, but it's also been good for the grassroots. And I do know, in terms of grassroots commitment, that Rod Campbell has that at his heart. He mentioned how a Fife, and I know the lobbying that he did for that club. I, too, pay tribute to its success and its international uh, players that have gone on to success and have worn the Scottish jersey. But the efforts that he's put in to try and ensure that they have the facilities to ensure that there can be future success to match those who are currently uh, pulling on the dark blue jersey. I know myself in my own community, the success that, for example, Loch End Boxing Club has had. It comes from a challenged area. It's had its difficulties in the past, but it also remarkably deals with some challenging individuals and turns them round. This has been a remarkable year for them. The success of Josh Taylor in winning a gold medal has been felt not simply by every member of the club, but by the entire community. Uh, the success of Lewis Benson getting there and unlucky in the draw and unfortunate not to go further has also, as I say, benefited the entire area. So at grassroots level, I see it in eastern Edinburgh as well as it's seen in North East Fife. But there is a possibility for a future to build on the legacy, not just in the past, to compete internationally, to go for bids. We're not going to get a Champions League final because the size of our stadia, but there are other international events that we can bid for 
and have now a track record of success that I believe puts us in a position to look forward to success and to further international events. But as particularly Rod Campbell says, it is about the grassroots. I remember many years ago speaking to the late David Taylor, who made the point that in Scotland, we had in football some of the best professional facilities for a small nation anywhere in the world. And yet we had some of the worst community facilities anywhere else in Europe. That is why we have to ensure that the legacy is not simply in where we go at international competition or even regional or national competition, but what we do at grassroots level. The days of blaze pitches for young footballers have to be consigned to the past as 3G pitches are bought in. It's not simply, as, uh, uh, as Ms Smith was mentioning, in terms of football and rugby. It's all those other sports that have also got to boost boxing, as I've mentioned, but in numerous other sports. This is the opportunity to make Scotland a better place, to put it on the global map in sport, but also the opportunity to build a grassroots sporting opportunity and to recognise that sport is for all, irrespective of their ability and the size of their wallet. Equally, we have to allow that opportunity for those who have that opportunity, as in Howe Fife, to compete on an international stage. That is being done. It can be done. We look back with success, but we look forward to an equal successful future. Many thanks. I now call on the Minister to make the closing speech on behalf of the Government. Thank you very much, Chief President. And I suppose at the end of uh, any year there is a tendency to look back at what has gone uh, before in the preceding uh, 12 uh, months. And uh, there is absolutely no doubt that in what has been uh, a remarkable and uh, most exciting of years generally for Scotland, it has been an incredible year uh, for Scottish uh, sport. The eyes of the world were on Scotland in 2014, and I believe we have conducted ourselves very well in that regard. And I think it's particularly appropriate that uh, the last members debate of this year gives uh, members the opportunity uh, to offer their own perspective on this year's uh, sporting achievements. And I'd like to thank Rod Campbell for bringing uh, this debate uh, to uh, the Chamber to let us do just that and thank uh, those members who have taken part uh, as well. I'd like to uh, turn to some of the uh, highlights of the year. Uh, President Officer, as Liz Smith uh, reminded us at the beginning of, of uh, the year, Scottish curlers, I think she made the point, sterling curlers in particular had phenomenal success on the world stage, uh, particularly winning medals at the uh, Winter Olympic and Paralympic uh, Games at Sochi. These uh, talented and committed athletes helped promote the game in Scotland and as outstanding athletes and ambassadors helped inspire many people uh, to try curling and become more active in their uh, lives. And the success in Sochi certainly uh, kick-started an outstanding year for sport in Scotland, turning to uh, the uh, summer, the sun shone most of the time, the venues were ready, and Scotland was a proud host of the 20th uh, Commonwealth uh, Games. The Scottish Government backed its commitment with funding of £382 million, 66% of the total Games budget, and we saw uh, Team Scotland achieve its highest ever uh, total medal hall, winning a, a total of 53 uh, medals across 10 uh, sports. Uh, Rod Campbell rightly spoke of a, a list of heroes, or too many uh, to mention uh, all, but I'd like to uh, mention a few. I was uh, very privileged to be at the Judo Scotland reception uh, on Tuesday, and the uh, uh, judokas who took part in uh, the Commonwealth Games were all in attendance. And it's worth uh, reminding us that we got uh, 13 medals from uh, 14 competitors. That was the best uh, medal haul for a single sport at a single uh, Commonwealth Games. And there was clear pride at that achievement at Judo Scotland. And I was uh, very uh, pleased to see uh, them bestow honorary life membership in uh, the organisation for all those athletes who had taken part as uh, part of Team Scotland at the Games. I think uh, they were described as the highest honour they could bestow on uh, their members. And of course, there was also at the Games the inspirational performance of uh, Lindsay Sharp, who rose from her sickbed to claim silver in the 800 metres at Hamden, a tremendous example of the triumph of human willpower, commitment and uh, dedication. It was the outstanding achievement of our Lawn Bowls team uh, against the outstanding uh, backdrop of Kelvin Grove. There was the emergence of Ross Murdoch, yet another great Scottish swimmer. There was also 13-year-old uh, Eric Davies, uh, Scotland's youngest ever uh, Commonwealth Games athlete and a medal winner uh, too. An uh, uh, extraordinary achievement for someone uh, so young. And no one will, of course, forget uh, the mailman uh, Charlie Flynn. If ever 
there is someone who could uh, rank as personality uh, of uh, the year in any field, let alone sports personality of the year. It has to be the charismatic uh, Mr uh, Flynn. And of course, we should remember there were four medals for Team Scotland and five uh, Paris sports. And I think we should be particularly proud of uh, having delivered the highest number of uh, para sports medal events in Commonwealth Games history, and unlike the Olympics, uh, they were integrated fully as part of uh, the Commonwealth uh, Games. And also featuring as the star of the show uh, was, of course, the city of uh, Glasgow. Uh, presiding officer, we uh, Glaswegians are very proud. We're sometimes defensive of our city, but in this uh, uh, case, in the case of the Commonwealth Games, there was no need to be defensive, and every reason to be proud. The people of Glasgow and the people of Scotland rose to the occasion. And prime amongst uh, them, of course, were our marvellous uh, Clydesiders and cast members from the opening uh, ceremony. The Games uh, heralded in a new generation of passionate, enthusiastic uh, volunteers who were central to making uh, the Games the best Games uh, ever. And I would like to put on record my thanks and appreciation to all those who uh, uh, volunteered over the course of the Games. And I recently uh, visited uh, Volunteer Scotland, uh, who are based in Stirling, and met Games volunteers there, and I was able to announce that the Scottish Government is supporting Volunteer Scotland with over £114,000 to harness uh, this enthusiasm from the Games and to promote the rich uh, and diverse benefits which volunteering uh, can bring. Rod Campbell spoke of the important uh, role of volunteers. I recognise it and very much uh, support it. And as well as a volunteering uh, legacy, we want to see uh, the uh, legacy of increased participation uh, presiding uh, officer. And, uh, of course, that is more than investment. I think Kenny McCaskill's uh, touching on that in terms of the inspiration that individual athletes uh, can bring to those who look up to them, and that is uh, part of the legacy. Well. But of course, it is about investment. Rod Campbell uh, touched on that. There have been more than 100 projects uh, supported by the 10 million Legacy Active Places uh, Fund. And yesterday in Castlemilk, uh, I was able to uh, attend an event to mark the in fact, the 21 projects are being funded by our £1 million uh, Legacy 2014 Sustainable Support for Communities Fund. Games equipment is now being used uh, across uh, the country at Grangemouth Stadium. Uh, athletes will be able to run in the uh, Hamden uh, running track, and their games facilities uh, are now open uh, to the public. It was recently at the Emirates, uh, Emirates Arena, and uh, one of the best things uh, that I uh, saw there uh, was the members of the public in uh, using uh, those uh, facilities. I should uh, say something about the Ryder Cup, of course. Uh, yes. Smith. Mike Smith, please. then would have helped. <laughs> well, I, I managed to hear the point anyway, uh, Ms Smith. I'm just about to turn to, the, I think you're talking about the Club Golf uh, programme, which is an excellent programme. I'm just about to touch on that. Of course, where we can uh, deliver that type of initiative in other sports, we will seek to do so. I would, of course, say the budget is, of course, limited. If we had uh, uh, more, we could uh, do more. But yes, of course, that type of uh, initiative is something that we welcome and will try to support. But I want to talk about the Ryder Cup because uh, it was another example of uh, Scotland's ability uh, to deliver. It uh, reinforced Scotland's status as the home of, of golf. Around 45,000 golf fans from across the globe uh, packed the course in each of the three days uh, uh, play. Uh, Liz Smith mentioned the BBC Sports Personality of uh, the Year Award, as well as the very moving tribute to those injured service personnel that she mentioned who took part in the Invictus Games, as well as Chris Hoy getting his very well-deserved lifetime achievement. Uh, of course, uh, Team Europe won uh, Team of the year, and Captain Paul McGinley very graciously, uh, first, his first thanks were to the people of Scotland. So, as with the Commonwealth Games, uh, our people were a vital uh, part of the success of uh, the Ryder Cup. And of course, as well as securing the legacy from the Commonwealth Games, we want to secure a legacy from the Ryder uh, Cup uh, as well, because we don't want to only want to be the home of golf; we want to be the future of uh, golf as well. And to underline this commitment earlier this year, the Scottish Government announced additional funding of up to £1 million over a, a four-year period to help introduce yet more youngsters and families to the game. Through uh, the Club Golf Programme, we have encouraged more than 350,000 youngsters to pick up uh, a club and get involved in the sport 
of golf. I'm running out of time. I see, President Officer, I could have, I wanted to talk about the a tremendous achievements of our national teams. The cricket team has, of course, qualified for next year's World Cup. We've seen uh, impressive performances from our rugby team. Our women's football team is now ranked 21st in the world. They came so close to qualifying uh, for the World Cup. And the men's team has greatly improved and on course to qualify for Euro uh, 2016. Uh, but I should uh, turn uh, uh, to close. Uh, 2014 has, of course, been an outstanding year. But, of course, we look forward uh, to presenting officer next year Scotland hosts the World Gymnastics, World IPC Swimming, World Orienteering Championships, as well as the European Judo and European Eventing Championships. And of course, the Open returns to Scotland in 2015 and 2016. And St Andrews will welcome back the Women's British Open uh, next year. Our ambitions for the years ahead are to build on the reputation that we have established through this year's achievements as the perfect stage uh, for major events. 2014 has given us the experience and the knowledge to deliver. 2014 will be hard to live up to, but I am confident we have many outstanding years of sport ahead of us as well. Many thanks, and thank you all. I now suspend this meeting until 2.30.